Right, sorry for having two different videos here. I just wanted to make sure that the uh, that the problem one through seven one worked before I kept going through the whole thing. And I wanted to see how long it was. And now I see I should be talking faster. So basically with this problem eight, we've got R equals, and then we need the magnitudes of velocity and acceleration. So we just figure out that the R position equals this equation. And so we just have to differentiate it, which isn't terrible. We just do some chain rules, some product rule, and it's just a long equation. It gets longer when we have to start squaring stuff because in order to find velocity, we need to find what the square root of the VI plus VJ squared plus VK squared. And so we just square everything. We calculate it all out. It somehow it all cancels and uh, it all works out to be this equation here this r etc and then we just uh, square root it to get this nice velocity equation right here then we need to find the magnitude acceleration so we take our velocity equation then we differentiate that which turns into this big old long sucker and then we have to square that on top of all that which gives us an even longer equation which somehow also cancels out adds together turns to ones and all those trig functions and then we end up with this equation almost magically uh, according to the answer i didn't figure everything out but here's what this all equals out to and then our a equals this equation here which you can find by just square rooting the equation that everything equals out to so now we have the problem nine the slow pitch we got max height etc cetera, etc cetera. We need to know if the pitch meets requirements uh, and by requirements, let's see, let me check. It means that it has to meet a maximum height between 1.8 meters and 3.7 meters. And so what we're doing is just finding the values of the Y of the velocity in term in um, the Y and the X. So we're splitting it up into its components and using those components, we just take the Y values and we figure out what uh, or we find out what the VY value is, 7.08 meters per second. We just plug that into our velocity in the Y direction equation of our regular negative AT plus V naught. And so we've got all that. And then we can integrate that to get the Y value and we can find the height at 0.722 seconds. We found 7.22 seconds. When we divided 7.08 by 9.81, uh, because that's meters per second divided by meters per second squared. And so it gives us 0.722 uh, because of dimensional analysis. Then we just plug that into our Y equation that we found. And then we get that it reaches 3.2 meters, uh, which is between 1.8 and 3.7. So that works out. Now we need to know how high the ball is when it reaches the batter to see if they're even going to hit it in the strike zone. So basically we just need to know at what point in time is it where the batter is? And so we can figure that out by saying how far the distance is between the thrower and the hitter. We divide that by the speed in the X direction, um, the X velocity, because we're using distance now. So we've got 15.2 divided by 10.9. We end up with 1.39 seconds that it takes between pitcher and batter. And then we just type that 1.39 seconds back into that original y equals equation to find out that it ends up just under a meter above the ground. So definitely within the strike zone, depending on the side to side value. So on this next one, problem 10, we need to determine the velocity range for B to C. So how fast can it go uh, and hit B? How fast can it go and hit C? Uh, to do that, we once again split everything up into their individual y and x coordinates. This one will do uh, one for b and one for c because they're two different things. Uh, we find out exactly what the distance is horizontally with the distances vertically for both of those. And then we find what our um, v, v naught is based on our um, x components, our x, our vx, our vy. Uh, so we'll start over here with this guy. Uh, we know that it's cosine 40 because that's the angle he throws it at. Uh, we know that Vx is V naught cosine 40 just because that's how horizontal components work. Vertical components work the same way. Uh, but for our vertical components, we'll put it into the equation 
um, Vy equals, and then we've got gravity involved here. And then X, we've got, um, you know, the same equation and Y, we just, we just have the same equation here. Uh, so we're just kind of repeating ourselves, but this one is to find the actual position vertically. This is to find the position horizontally. So we need to figure out what exactly um, needs to happen here for us to reach our certain heights. And we need a general equation to do that. A general equation that involves both the X and the Y functions. And so because we have two equations up here with an X function and a Y function, if we get everything, if we get these T's in terms of X and in terms of Y, then we can combine those two equations together and using that, um, we've got our V naught T equals X over cosine 40. So we just plug in V naught T um, to this T right here, X over cosine 40, V naught T, V naught T. And then we've got X over cosine 40 times sine 40. So that turns into 10, 40. Uh, and then we just use our regular Y equation with the gravity and with a plus two, because that's the original height it was thrown at. And so we can end up by simplifying, we get T equals the square root of et cetera. And so for the B and C to find out the time that it takes to get from one, to get to B from the thrower, C from the thrower, all we have to do is plug in our earlier found Y and X values. And we know how much time it took to throw to each of those. So then we can come back to this V naught T equation equals X. And then we can find out uh, what the V naught is when T equals 1.3 or 1.36. And when our X equals our 16.9 here or our 21.92 here. And we get that the B must be 16.26, C is 21.04. And so our initial velocity has to be somewhere in between those. Then we got problem 11. We need to determine the velocity. This one's pretty stinking easy. We just use our regular uh, NT coordinate system. We've got our A equals V squared over R. And because we were given both our A and our R and our R, we can just plug those two right in, solve for V, and we end up with 12.13. And problem 12 is basically the same thing, but instead we were given our a and our V. And we know that it is in 4G to the inside. So we just have to multiply our G by four and that gives us our velocity towards the center or no, sorry, our acceleration towards the center. So we've got our tangential velocity. We've got our normal acceleration. We just have to plug those guys in to find out our radius of 1,467.89 meters. And I'm going to take a sec to look over this before I start to talk about it. So just give me a second. Okay, let's tackle this problem 13, the one that definitely took me the longest. So it, what it wants is we need recorded values of r dot, r double dot, theta dot, and theta double dot. So we're going to start with the r dot and theta dot because that one's easy. We get to work with velocities. So first we started by using the given values, the given um, X and Y coordinates, we could find R, which is 3000 feet and theta, which is 36.87 degrees. So we're going to look at our RT graph and we see that velocity equals R dot plus R times theta dot. So we can split those up into their individual coordinates. This being similar to the X in my brain, this being similar to the Y this side being similar to the Y. And so we just need to split it up into coordinates with the VR equals V cosine theta velocity basically here, um, uh, here with cosine theta representing this. And so we are able to find out our theta from that. Um, well, we know what our theta is, but we're able to find what our VR is, uh, which is also known as R dot. And so we can get our R dot from this guy uh, just by finding the horizontal component of our overall velocity. We can do the same thing 
with theta, finding the vertical component of our overall velocity through getting the sine. Uh, this in my mind equated to y, and it seemed to work out just fine. Uh, so that's what I did. And so now we got out, got that our uh, theta dot would be negative 2.77.2, uh, but we need that in radians. So, or I suppose it would be radians per second. So I just uh, found that second value, the V equals R dot. And I decided to apply that right here. So we've got our V, which is 277.2, R equals R theta dot. Our V equals 27.7.2, and then that equals 3000 times R theta dot. So by that, we get our radians which is our theta dot, which I suppose should be radians per second. Um, that gets our r dot, gets our theta dot. So we move into our acceleration equations. Um, our basic one up here, we're just basing everything off that with it being one component here and another component there. But in order to um, get our double dot here, we already have these two. We need to get AR. Well, what the heck is AR? It is the combination of AT cosine and AN sine. And why is that? Because of all this stuff over here where we have our RT graph, our E theta, ER. We have our AT right here. We've got our normal acceleration here with the plane. Uh, this is from the satellite here. And this is the plane here. If we graph it all from one origin point and find all of the relationships between AT and ER and AN and E theta and AT and E theta, then we can find out what things work in which directions. So we have here AT cosine theta plus AN sine theta because they are both working in the same direction as our ER, which is related to our AR, which um, they're both this direction, this direction. And so that, because they follow that, are considered the components that add towards the acceleration in the R. And so we just have to add those, which would be AT cosine theta and AN sine theta. So that's exactly what we have here. And then we just plug everything in with our AT, which was given to us, our AN, which was also given to us, or I found it up here, right here. We can use this equation for that to find AN. Uh, then we just plug everything in, 10 cosine, using our regular theta we got before, and we get an AR of this value. So I'm gonna clear the drawing so it makes more sense. And then we need the A, theta, which is basically the same thing as before. We're just taking the values that are now in this direction. So that would be this value here and this value here. And because they are on either sides of our origin here, we actually have to subtract this an cosine theta. Um, that's going to be our positive value. And this at sine theta is going to be our negative value. You can see that here. And so we just plug in again our AT that was given in the problem of 10, and then our AN, which we found up here uh, from the NT graph or the NT coordinate system. Uh, we just find all that. We get that A naught, A theta equals 26.34. Um, so now we just have to plug those two into their respective equations. And that means for to find our double dot, we just have to plug in our AR here, which is now 32.26, and our radius that we found before with our theta dot that we found before. Uh, by equaling all this out to be our double dot, we get that that all gets to be 57.9 feet per second squared. And then we can do the same thing for the theta double dot, where we just take this equation we plug in the components that we found earlier, right here, right here, right here, and right here. Plug in all those equations, components into the equation, and then we can equate them all to theta double dot, which equals out to 0.0315 radians uh, per second squared. 
or just radians? Yeah, it's per second squared. And that gives us our answer for our theta double dot. So that clears up problem 13. Now problem 14, I'm also gonna have to take a second to look over this again. All right, so let's get to this last problem 14 here, be done with it. So we've got the different weights going on here. So we got A, we got to find the acceleration of B, acceleration of A, acceleration of B we can find using the VB equals V naught plus AT equations. Um, we know the VB, we know the VB is 480 at two seconds. We know that acceleration is four. No, not four. We know that acceler we don't know acceleration. I was reading the wrong thing. We know that our t equals two. And so uh, we also know that our v naught equals zero because it says block b starts from rest. So from this, we just divide 480 by two. We get 240, a b equals 240. Uh, using that, we can plug this into equation three up here. We've got a c equals 75, uh, 3a a. We need to find that out. And then for a b, a b equals 240. And so from this, we can find out acceleration of A is negative 3.45 in the downwards. So it's going upwards. And then we get to problem B, where we need to find out velocity, initial velocity of C, initial velocity of A. So we just use our regular old V equals V naught plus AT equation again. At T equals 2, we know the velocity of C equals 280. We don't know the initial velocity, but we do know that the acceleration is 75 and our t equals two. So we'll just plug everything in, uh, divide everything out, and we get that v naught c equals 130. Once again, we come back to our problem equation two here. Uh, we plug everything in, our vc, we got uh, 130. Our va, we want uh, our va, we want to figure that out. Uh, it's multiplied by three because we got the three uh, ropes here connected to it. B is multiplied by four because we've got the four ropes here connected to it. And then we just plug in because the initial velocity of B equals zero. Then we get that the initial velocity of A is negative 43.3 downwards. So the last one, change of position of slider block C after three seconds. Oh, we just use the regular old... Um, xc equals x naught c plus vt plus a one half at squared. We plug in all our known information. We've got c at three seconds equals zero because that's the starting position. Uh, 130 is the meters or the velocity is 130 per second. Um, t equals three, three seconds plus, you know, plug everything in 75 acceleration. Uh, three seconds again, we find out that we have 727.5 millimeters to the right. And uh, that wraps up my homework for the homework one dynamics.